Have someone specifically with an FC of across that would just be focusing on coaches. And I'm excited to tell you that we are getting to that point and we're almost officially at that point. Um, I want to introduce someone to you guys real quick by the name of Kevin Green. We've been uh, really kind of just praying and seeking God's uh, direction in this, but um, we are bringing on some on our staff of seven people. We'll now have eight who will officially be our director of coaches ministry. Now, what does that mean for you guys? He's not going to be in the uh, dorm room with you 11 kids at the middle, in the middle of the night. Uh, he's not going to be really focusing on, on teams and, and summer tournaments and those things. But he's going to be 100% focused on you guys and the coaches. And we hope that uh, over time, the relationships between you and Kevin develop so that you guys can walk along this journey together. And maybe it's a, a time of uh, prayer. Maybe it's a time of need. Maybe it's a, an incident or something that's happening specifically within your team. And you just need someone to talk to. Kevin's going to be there for you guys. So I just want to introduce Kevin, have him kind of come up real quick, and just to, uh, to share his heart about coaches. And uh, you also get to meet him. I'm also excited, too, because there's not a ton of uh, tall people uh, you know, floating around here. And so uh, it's good to be able to look eye to eye here with uh, Kevin. So thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, so, so when Ryan asked me to, to come and speak to everybody, I thought I knew what I wanted to say. I just wanted to introduce myself. But then I realized, as I was listening to Coach Donowski last night, I was listening to Coach Mead and listening to Glenn, um, I think like every good game plan, you adjust. You know, um, one of the things I'm a coach's education trainer for U.S. Lacrosse, and we have a, a mantra, it's adjust we must. You know, every situation is going to be different. And as I'm listening to Coach Mead and listening to Coach Donowski about, you know, know who you are. Okay? And in U.S. Lacrosse, we, we talk about philosophy. And I realized I'm going to put away everything that I was going to tell you and start out maybe even shocking you and saying something that you probably won't hear from a lot of people. But, um, and Cubby, thank you for the direction last night. I'm a Jewish kid who was saved by Jesus Christ. You don't hear that too many times in a, in a meeting. Um, and when we talk about knowing who you are, I didn't know who I was for 40 years. 40 years. And this is not you know, dramatizing anything. It's, I woke up and I realized that I had no direction. I realized that um, you know, what I did growing up as a, as a kid, as a player in college, um, post-collegiately in my, in my business life, I realized there was no meaning, there was nothing. Um, and you know, my wife brought me, we were going to church, uh, I've got a 13 year old son, and 11 year old daughter who play. Um, and we're going to church on a regular basis and it really didn't mean anything. And so I'm almost 47, so you know, uh, Easter for me is my birthday, uh, the Easter vigil. But I realized one Sunday morning um, and I tell the story, there was literally a, uh, a cool breeze that kind of brushed over me while I was in church. The church didn't really mean anything to me. Um, and then I decided, well, what was going on in my life? So um, I'm going to step back again and say, you know what? I know who I am. So one of the things, uh, who I am, I'm somebody who suffered with severe depression and ADD. Okay? And I know something was wrong. Yeah, I was 17 years old. I knew things were wrong. But again, just ignored it. 40 years go by. All this stuff. Yeah, my, so it's interesting. Coach Moon was talking about Nick. So I think it was my junior year. I played at Franklin Marshall College. And um, you know, I was an average player. I wasn't a good miles. Um, but I went to my coach and I said, Coach, you know what? I just I don't think I want to play anymore. And my coach went, OK. And I remember, there, there are very few things I remember in my life so vividly. But I remember staring at my coach, and it seemed like an eternity. And I was waiting for something. And nothing ever happened. And I just, I remember this frozen moment, and I said, you know what? I just, I, I left. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. 
tell us some things happened. I'm not going to go into all the details about that, but you know, I think back about this now, and it's okay. You know, Jason and I were talking the other day about you know we have these things, we have these demons that we have to face. You know, and I know who I am because I know I can talk about this, and I know who I am because after 25 years in corporate America, I was ready to give it up. I was done. Okay. I've been involved with FCA on the board for probably about seven years. Started a regional um, club travel program. I live up just below the uh, University of Delaware. And started really exploring my faith. You know, it's not about a religion. It was about faith to me. It was about understanding who I was and who I was to myself, to my kids, to my wife. Um, you know, I've been married for 18 years and I felt like I haven't given my wife what she needs for a long time. You know, I look at my kids, and it was my son, who's a 40-year-old man in a 13-year-old body, and it says to my wife, Mom, why is it that Dad teaches positive coaching, and he teaches all this stuff, but he comes home, and he's just miserable. And he called me out on the carpet, and my wife said, you know what, you need to go talk to your son. And I sat down and I talked to him. And he poured out his heart. He said, Dad, he goes, I'm just, he goes, I'm scared. He goes, I don't know what to do anymore. I can't help you. And I realized, you know what? It has to start with ourselves. We have to understand how do we help ourselves. <clears throat> so here I am, you know, working for 25 years. And, and September rolls around, and all this stuff is building up. And I talked to my wife. I said, you know what? I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. So the first thing out of her mouth is, well, what about FCA? She knew. Um, and it's, it's a journey, because I said, you know, who am I to lead coaches? You know, coach me. You know, who am I to lead coach? You know, it's, and then I realized, you know what? I am who I am for a reason, okay? And when I explore this, I realized that, think about it, okay? You as a coach, think about this when I, when I ask you. Okay. As a coach, you are expected to give something. The players want something from you, right? <laughs> All the time. The parents want something, right? They want a scholarship. They want a, They want their kid to play more. Okay. Your administrators want something, right? The alumni want something. Okay. Well, so everybody's tugging at you. Well. You know, who steps back and takes care of us? Um, Coach Goro, um, who's at Western College now, was at Georgetown for a while, and kind of Marshall. Um, we were talking yesterday, and he said it, it just such a simple thing. He said, you know, coaches are always trying to be lifesavers, right? We're always trying, you know what I'm talking about, right? We're always trying to save that one kid. We're always trying to, to reach out and pull them up. Well, we're always trying to save somebody else's life but our own. Has anybody else ever committed in here? Okay. Anybody else doesn't know how to say no to lacrosse? Okay. So, you know, I've got three, four, or five left-handed gloves in my back of my truck. And I don't know how they get there. But the kids don't ask for them. You know, my car is filled, just like yours probably during the season. Okay. And we don't see our wives as much as we should. Right. We don't see our kids as much as we should. We don't spend time reflecting on you know what? Are we a good person? Do we have character? Do we love the people that we should love? Are we taking care of our home first? Okay. It talks about it in the Bible. You know, we need to take care of our home. We need to get our house in order first. Okay. <laughs> Does this resonate with anybody else? Okay. If it doesn't, you know, and it's funny because you know, I look at, at the coaches, there are some that are our age. Some that are younger, and, and I guarantee you, if you haven't experienced it now, you will at some point. Whether you have kids, whether you have a wife and a family, at some point, I don't want you to wake up and go, you know what? It's it's God. This has gotten so far out of hand. How, where do I go? And I realized, you know, I was ready to walk away from almost a six-figure job because I believed in this so much. You know, I've spent seven seven years now doing coaches' education positive coaching lines training, and finally realized, you know what, that's God's gift to me. Um, now, I'm not quite as eloquent 
and, uh, and haven't memorized the, uh, all the scripture passages, but there's some great stuff in that book. <laughs> some really good stuff in there. Yeah. So, one, 1 Peter 4.10, and it says, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm lucky now. I get to take my kids to school every morning. I read for a half an hour, and then I go to morning mass. And that's my time. It's my time to reflect on how am I doing today? How am I living my life? Am I being fair to my family, to my friends? <clears throat> and, and the reason I read that, and the reason that I'm standing here today is that, you know, it, it's hard to believe that anybody could, you know, the, the question is why, right? What's in it for me, right? When you go somewhere, it's, you ask yourself the question, what's in it for me? So what I started to figure out was, why am I doing this? Why would a coach here or anywhere else want to talk to Kevin Green. And I, you know, and I realized one morning in Mass, I said, you know what, if I'm put on this earth to do nothing else but to help people not make the mistakes that I made, not wait 40 years too long, not wait a day too long, then it's worth it. Okay. Um, it was my wake-up call. There's a lot of things that I look back on now, you know, as a player, um, as a coach, as an early coach. Um, and it's all about that. It's, am, I, am I coaching the kids the way that they deserve to be coached? You know, fair but firm. You know, talk about Coach Ehrman. You know, the same thing. It's, you have to go through your own personal hell to be able to come out as a better man, as a better father, a better husband, a better coach, a better citizen. All of that stuff is wrapped up, and it's not about choosing a religion. It's choosing a relationship with God. And my relationship with God is you know, I'm not a preacher. I don't ever think I will want to be one. But I talk to people about what's in my heart and about how it can change you. And if you don't take the opportunity to let it change you, you're wasting an incredible moment in your life. And this is the thing that I want to be able to share with you. So we haven't written a, a, a vision out on paper, but our job is to serve you. Like Ryan said, you know, we do an incredible job of ministering to college players, to high school players. But nobody ever takes care of us. And for me, it's going to be an honor and a privilege and a challenge to be there for you. Um, and the beautiful thing is, why, why for you? There's no strings attached. You know, how many times does the deal come with that? You know, the only string attached is, you know what? Give it a shot. Read that great book. Have a relationship with God. And save yourself before it gets too late. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and I thank you for the opportunity to be here. To So first of all, thank you on you know, behalf of FCA. Um, Coach Mead, thank you for, for getting up and sharing that amazing story. Um, Glenn, thank you as well. Um, you know, we're going to be here all day. There's a, uh, a slip of paper on your tables if you're interested in either me reaching out to you or one of our uh, associates reaching out for your, your players. Um, please just uh, you know, leave it on your table if you want. We'll come around and collect it. Um, before we leave, does it, do you have anything else you want to say? Um, so I'm going to close this out in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to come together, to have this wonderful sport, to be able to bring us together in fellowship. This time this morning of reflection, of incredible stories from Coach Mead and from Coach Miles, the opportunity to stand here and profess our faith to you. We, uh, we pray that you send these coaches out with the, the will to become better citizens, become better men, um, and, and, and really lead the, the kids in this lacrosse community. We pray that you lift them up throughout the day, give them strength and a safe passage on the way home. We grant that you give them a great opportunity to minister to kids and to themselves and their families throughout the year, throughout their lifetime. In your name, pray. Amen. Amen.
Everyone, thank you for being here. Have a great morning.